What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be taking a look at reputations that aren't limited in grind so you can grind them for a few hours or all day long if you wanted to, there's no limitations on how much reputation you can get per day until you reach exalted and these factions also reward mounts. So I'm going to be running through how to start the reputation grind and the best ways of going about the reputation grind once you get it so you can grind up as much as you want, get yourself a mount and be happy. Now, this video is quite long, so I have broken it into two parts. In part one, we're going to be covering the Vanilla, the Burning Crusade, and the Wrath of the Lich King reps that meet this criteria. And then in the next video, we'll cover the remaining ones as well. The first mount up is going to be the Scenarian War Hippogriff. And while the model on it is kind of old, I don't know, Hippogriffs still look pretty good to me. And this is going to come from the Scenarian Expedition faction, which is a TBC rep. For this reputation, you are going to have to head to Outland and then to Zangamash. And within Zangamash, you're going to go to the dungeon section, which is smack bang in the middle of the zone. See it on the map right now. Head here and swim down. And to complete this grind, we're basically going to need to do dungeons over and over and over again just to grind out the reputation. Now, you could do the quests in the zone as well at the Scenario and Expedition base. But this is going to be your long method, your long-term method of finishing up the reputation. But you, you can do the quest as well, that will help. And if you do get locked out of dungeons or you get bored, then it's a bit of an alternative too. So once we're in the dungeon section, we don't want to do the raid. You can have four different portals, one to the far right, which will be the underbug. One to the kind of middle-ish, which will be the raid. One to the left slightly, which is going to be the steam vaults. And then to the far left, we have the slave pens. So you want to run all three of the dungeons on Heroic first of all, which will lock you to the dungeon. And then once you're locked all three dungeons, you'll want to run out and head to the Steam Vaults again. But this time you want to do it on normal difficulty. And the goal is just to run through Steam Vaults over and over and over again, continuing to get rep from all the mobs and the bosses in there. So you want to pull everything and kill it down and keep repeating that, fully clear the dungeon, run out, reset and go again. And just keep basically repeating that until you are exalted. So there's nothing too crazy to this one. It's literally just a repeat of the steam vaults. And then once you are exalted, we can head over to the Scenarian base, which you can see on the map now. Head to the Quartermaster and pick yourself up the Scenarian Hippogriff. One thing to note though, each time you kill the first and second boss, there is a control panel behind them. Which I would recommend clicking just to make life easier because that will give you access to the last boss. If you don't click them, you're going to have to run all the way back. Next up, we have the Riding Talbux. And from this rep grind, you're going to end up with 8 mounts total. So for one rep grind, it's quite a good chunk of mounts. You're going to get 4 non-armored Talbux and 4 armored Talbux mounts. And this is a TBC Outland reputation. For Horde, it'll be from the Magha. For Alliance, it'll be from the Kurenai. And if you've never quested in Nagrand before, you will need to do some pre-questing or like do a pre-quest uh, quest line to access the reputation essentially. For Horde, the quest is called the Impotent Leader and you're going to get that from Jorin Deadeye in Garadar. For the Alliance, it's going to be the Do My Eyes Deceive Me from Huntress Batuk from Intelar. And both of these NPCs are found in Nagrand in the respective bases. You can see those on the maps. And once you've gone through that quest chain, it's like three or four quests, you'll have access to the main hub, all the NPCs will talk to you and give you quests, and you'll be good to start grinding the reputation. Now for the pre-quest, you are meant to take a mob down to low HP, not kill it. So I would recommend getting yourself the Soft Foam Sword, which you can pick up from a toy vendor in Orgrimmar or a Stormwind. Grab that, use that, and it'll allow you to fatally wound without killing the NPC, which will allow you to continue with the questing. So once we've got the reputation faction unlocked, you can t speak to one of the NPCs. It's the one that's next to the, the wanted board for Horde. Not too sure where it is for Alliance, but just speak to the NPCs. And you'll get a quest to collect war beads from ogres. With that quest, you want to head to an ogre camp in Nagran. Doesn't really matter which one. I like the one that I'm showing on the map right now, because it feels quite clustered all the mobs together. And you just want to murder the ogres over and over and over again. And you'll get reputation from killing them. Only a little bit. But more importantly, you'll get war beads sometimes from the corpse. And every 10 you hand in, you'll get 500 reputation. So when I said this rep grind isn't that bad, it really isn't too bad. Because the, the war beads drop quite often. 
and then you can get your wrap up, get to Exalted and go and buy yourself the eight Talbuk mounts. Continuing with the TBC reputations, the next one up is the Shatari Skyguard. And once you reach Exalted with this faction, you will get yourself five mounts, five Never Ray mounts in different colors, and also a Never Ray pet as well, if that's something you're after. And to access this faction, you will want to head over to the Black Wind Landing, which is found in Skettis, like the Skettis area, in the corner of the Terracar Forest in Outland. And here you'll find a bunch of NPCs just before you reach Skettis. There'll be like a little camp set up with some NPCs that are friendly, all a part of the Shatari Skyguard. And those will allow you to do the main bulk of the rep grind. Now there is a bit of a quest line that you need to do to hit the main rep grind. So definitely worth rec uh, working through that and I'll talk about that in a moment. But this rep grind is essentially a rinse and repeat. You'll get a, a reputation from killing the mobs that are in the area, but you're only going to get 10 or so rep. So what you want to do is kill the mobs in Skettis. You'll collect six Shadow Dust from the Arakoa mobs. The other mobs won't give it. Once you have six Shadow Dust, you'll head back over to Ser uh, Severin, which is in the little base. He'll give you an elixir that'll allow you to see hidden mobs. Using that elixir, you'll head back into Skettis and kill the Time Loss mobs, which will have a chance of dropping Time Loss scrolls. You'll collect 40 Time Loss scrolls, and then you'll find these kind of purple runes on the ground with like a bone pile in the middle. Click on that and you'll be able to summon one of four named mini bosses, which will have a cost of 10 scrolls. That's why you need four to summon each of the different ones. So summon one of each and you'll get an item from each of them. Take those four items back to the little camp and there'll be an Arakora in a cage called Hazak. Speak to him. You'll be able to turn those in for a item that will allow you to summon Tarak, who's in the middle. Kill him and you'll get a big chunk of 550 reputation. The mini bosses give 350 reputation, I believe it is. And then the other mobs obviously give 10 or so. So you want to just be rinsing and repeating that process and gaining your reputation that way. Now, Terak does have a bit of a cooldown, so it is worth doing it in a staggered approach. Don't just farm a bunch of scrolls and do it that way. Don't farm like 100 odd scrolls and try and do it all at once. It's better to do it in the kind of repeat process manner because then you won't be running into the cooldown on summoning Terak as badly. To start the quest line, you want to head to the, the camp I mentioned a moment ago, which is the Black Wind Landing, and speak to Severin, and he'll have a quest for you to go collect the Six Shadow Dust. Go do that, get that, head back to him. You'll get an elixir from him. Use the elixir, and Sky Commander Adaris will be attacked. You'll be able to speak to Sky Commander Adaris, and he'll tell you to use the elixir to go kill three named mobs. Fly around, go kill those three named mobs. And the Talon Priest Ishal, which is one of the named mobs, will drop an item that will start a quest. Head back to the, the Black Wind Landing, hand those in, and you'll be told to go to the lowest city in Shatrath. You'll speak to an Arakoa there who will send you then back again to Adaris. Adaris will say that you're not going to do anything to help. And instead the Hazak, the little Arakoa in the cage, will say we've got to do something. You speak to him. He'll make you go collect a, a package. Head back to him. And then he'll tell you to buy an item from Sahak in uh, another Arakoa that will be friendly to you for a period of time. You'll buy the item from him. And then from there on out, it's the final stage where you want to collect the 40 Time Loss Scrolls kill the four mini bosses, head back, speak to Hazak, he'll finish the quest, he'll give you an item to summon Terok for free, and then you'll be able to hand in the items that you gathered again, and you'll get a second item, so you can summon Terok twice, you know, once the cooldown's back up. Head to the center of the map, summon Terok, kill him, and basically just repeat the process until you're done with the reputation grind. The next reputation up is another BC one, and that's going to be the Neverwing. And once you get exalted with the Neverwing, you will get six Neverwing Drakes, which still look pretty good in my opinion, even today. Even with them being slightly lower res, they really do look like good Drakes. So this faction is basically collecting Neverwing eggs. Handing in the eggs for reputation and rinsing and repeating that. There is dailies you can do as well, but the eggs are going to be your farmable source of reputation, which is in the Neverwing ledge in Shadow Moon Valley in kind of the bottom right corner-ish. To get to that point, though, you will need to do a quest line, which starts with Mordenai in Shadow Moon Valley, just to the left of the Dragon Moor Fortress in the bottom right of the zone. You'll speak to Mordenai, and he will ask you to go kill some Rock Nail Flayers, You'll kill them, they'll get things off the corpses that you can feed the drakes with. This item does have a 30 second cooldown, so I recommend using them as you go along. Once you've fed enough, then you'll get a quest from Nethar Netharaku, big drake in the sky, that to kill 15 dragon moor orcs. 
And once that's done, you'll have, then have to head off and collect crystals in the south. Once you're done with the crystals, you'll head back and you'll get another quest to free five of the drakes in the Dragon Maw Fortress. Now, when you free the drake, it will kind of run around and start trying to fight things that are nearby. So just help it out and kill the things that are nearby and then it will fly off and it will be free. So then you'll get your completion for that quest. Next up, you'll be asked to speak to Karen Naku. And when you speak to Karinaku to pick up the next quest, don't be on a mount, don't be shapeshifted, anything like that. Because this quest is quite temperamental. Once you accept the quest, hopefully a mob called Zulu Head will spawn. If he doesn't spawn, it means yours is bugging out. So get rid of the quest. Make sure you're not mounted or anything. Pick it up again. If it doesn't work again, look for any of these Dragon Moor Elites on the wall. Because I had one that was actually stuck there. And once I killed the Dragon Moor Elite... The mob was able to spawn once I picked up the quest again and we were good to go. So just kind of look out for things in the area because if it doesn't spawn pretty much instantly, then there's something wrong and you need to kind of try and fix that. Once we're done with that, go and hand in the quest once again to Karinaku. And once again, you don't want to be on a mount, you don't want to be shapeshifted and you'll jump onto the dragon's back and it'll fly away. And once you get flown away, then you'll have another quest to go over to the Dragon Maw camp in the Neverwing Ledge and speak to Overlord Morgor. Uh, once there, he'll tell you to go speak to the Taskmaster to get your tasks, and you're at the point where you can finally grind the rep for the Neverwing Eggs. So I recommend an, an add-on called Neverwing Eggs, which will be in the description below, and it's gonna mark your map with all the locations of the eggs. It's a bit of an eyesore, <laughs> and it's gonna show you all the locations so you can fly around and get them. They're generally on top of things or inside things, one thing to note as well is there is a cave entrance to the south area that you can go inside. It'll be a, bit, a big mine shaft and there's a bunch of eggs in there as well. So if there's a location that looks like it's above ground, it could end up being underneath the ground. So I definitely would recommend checking in the uh, cave miner entrance thing as well because there is a ton in there to check for. And you just fly around continuously collecting eggs. You'll hand them into a goblin that stood near the taskmaster. And once you've got enough reputation, You'll be able to do a quest chain for bow down to the High Lord and Lord Illidan, uh, Illidan Stormrage. Then you'll be sent back to Shatraf. You'll speak to a guy. You'll be picked. Uh, you'll be able to pick a Drake that you want. And then once you've picked your Drake, you'll have to head all the way back to Neverwing Ledge. You'll speak to the Drake dealer Horlunk, who's in that kind of base camp that we've been working at. And you'll be able to buy the remaining drakes that you don't have. And you would have got yourself these six Neverwing drakes. The next ones up are the base faction mounts. So the Horde and Alliance ones, humans, orcs, night elves, etc. Um, these ones are pretty straightforward. But you could also make a class trial where you make a class trial of the race that you're missing. You send it some gold. You buy the mounts from the vendor and you're good to go. But some people do want to get their reputation up as well. So they have the reputation so they can work towards the reputation achievement or whatever. And if that's you then just head to the Quartermaster for the faction that you want to get. So if it's the Orcs, you'll head to Orgrimmar. If it's the Goblins, you'll head to Orgrimmar. If it's the Torrens, you'll head to Thunderbluff. Basically where they're located, uh, find that major faction city and find the Quartermaster. They'll sell you a Tabard. You'll wear the Tabard and any dungeon content you do, low level or high level, you'll get reputation from mobs killed. So you could do current content and gain reputation. Or you could do low level content and game reputation too. It's up to you how you want to go about it. But if you want to farm it, it's probably best just to pick a longer dungeon that is lower level. Run through it, pull all the mobs, kill them, reset and repeat until you're exalted. And then go and pick up your faction mounts. The next mount on our list is going to be the Red Drake, which comes from Exalted with the Wormrest Accord, which is a Wrath of the Lich King faction. And very similar to the faction mounts we just spoke about, this faction will be putting on a tabard grinding dungeons and gaining reputation. So pretty straightforward, not too difficult. Although you will need to be friendly with the Wormrest Accord before you can buy the Tabard. Wormrest Accord is located in Dragon Blight in Northrend, big Wormrest Temple. Head to the top of that and there'll be a Quartermaster there. So if you're friendly, you can head there, buy the Tabard and be on your way. If you're not friendly, that's fine too. You just need to do some quests. You can either do quests in Borean Tundra at Amber Ledge, be a quest chain there that you can run through that will take you to Kaldara or alternatively these there is a quest chain at the Wormrest Temple too right at the bottom there should be an NPC of your faction that will give you the quest gaining an audience run through that quest chain and you should get enough rep to get you to friendly if not just head over to Borean Tundra and do those quests as well once you're friendly go and buy the tabard 
And the tab ad works in a way that you can only do certain dungeons. You can do certain North Rend dungeons for reputation. All of the dungeons on Heroic in North Rend will give you reputation. And then certain ones on Normal will give you reputation. So Halls of Lightning will give you rep on Normal. Pits of Saron will give you rep on Normal. Forge of Souls will give you rep on Normal. So just pick one, farm it on Normal and do your rep. I would recommend doing a bunch of them on Heroic first because you do get a bit more rep. Um, and then just grind out some on normal until you're exalted. This tab ad does also work during the Wrath of the Lich King time walking as well. So if that event comes around and you want to kind of double dip, you can throw that tab ad on and gain rep there as well. Once you're exalted, head back to the Worm Rest Temple, head to the Quartermaster and buy yourself the Red Drake. The next faction up will award you with the Ice Mammoth and the Grand Ice Mammoth, which is a three person mount. But unfortunately, it has quite a long pre-quest line that you'll need to go through to be able to unlock the faction so you can gain rep with them. That is the Sons of Hodir, which is a Wrath of the Lich King reputation. To start the quest line, you will need to head over to Storm Peaks. And in K3, which is the, the first base you'll come across, kind of to the south of the zone, you'll find Gretchen in the big building, and she'll give you the quest, they took all our men. That'll take you up north a little bit, you'll kill the mobs there, you'll collect the keys and you'll open the cages. You'll fly back to Gretchen and you'll get the quest, uh, Leave No Goblin Behind, which will take you up north again, but you'll come to like a cave entrance. You'll go inside the cave and you'll find not the goblin, but instead Loch Lyra, and that'll start the next section of the quest lines, which will take you into the cave or the mines to kill Mildred. You'll kill Mildred, you'll get the key, you'll head back, then you'll get a quest to go and speak to an NPC. You'll hand that in and you'll get a quest to discipline the exhausted Vykul. They're just around the kind of mine entrance or mine place. You'll find them kind of sat on the ground. You'll use the, the pole on them and do that until the quest is done. You'll head back. You'll get another quest to kill Garhal, which is just kind of up the, just behind the NPC that you've just spoke to. Kill that. You'll get the keys to free Loch Lyra. Head back to Loch Lyra, free her, and then you'll have to head to Brunhilda, uh, Brun, Brunhilda Village. And there you'll speak to Loch Lyra again, and you'll have to kill one of the locals. Once you kill the local, you'll be able to accept the pack. And you'll begin the next kind of section of the quest line, which will be to defeat the six challenges in the area. So once you defeat the six challenges, then you'll be sent over to Brijana, who's just kind of outside of the village a little bit, just kind of to the east. Uh, go speak to them and they'll get you on a bear and you'll have to shoot down giants and wargs with a flaming arrow. Do enough of those and take yourself back. Then once you're done with that, you'll have to head to Dunnifilum. And you'll find these kind of proto drakes in chains. Click on the proto drake, you'll get on top of it. And then you'll need to three, uh, free three prisoners to use your button that you've got. Take three of them, fly back, and repeat that process three times until you've freed three proto drakes and nine prisoners total. So you can do three prisoners at a time. Once you're done with that, she'll then send you to Astrid, who will send you a little bit north to kill some yetis. These aren't in a cave or anything, they're just on the mountain. Collect the fur from the yetis, head back. And then you'll be sent into a cave that's just near on the way to Dunnifilum. Uh, head inside that cave, kill all the worms that you need to for the quest. And then right at the back of the cave, you'll find a big bear. Jump on top of the bear and the bear will take you out. And then once you're out, Astrid will then tell you you need to train your bear. So you'll head to a big chained yeti called Kil uh, Kir Garak. And you'll summon your bear, you'll have a button to summon it. Fight on the bear. Kill that Yeta and head back to Astrid. Then Astrid will send you into the pit and you'll fight the mounted uh, Hildenir in the pit. Once you've killed enough, you're done with that. And then basically Astrid will say, you know, you're coming up to the big challenge now. You'll be sent over to Loch Lyra again and you'll have to mount a Proto Drake. You'll be taken to the top of the Stemple of Storms and you'll have to kill the mobs if you melee. You'll have to use the grappling hook to kind of go between the different proto drakes. If you range though, any of the mobs that are in range, you can just use a range spell and kill them. Uh, because you're level 120, I'd imagine you'll kill them instantly. Once you're done with all 10, your proto drake should take you to the top of the temple, but it might not. You might have to jump off and use something to not die. Uh, take yourself to the top of the temple either way and speak to Thorim. You'll have to listen to Thorim's story and then uh, Thorim will send you just past Dunnifilum. There'll be some kind of giants and fire elementals there that you'll have to kill. While killing the giants though, they'll drop an item called the Slag Covered Metal, which will start a new quest. And this is very important. You must get this 
and accept it. Do all the quests that you've been given in that area and you should end up handing them in and getting a new quest called Spark of Hope, which will send you all the way back to Thorim. You'll go to Thorim, he'll talk a little bit more and then he'll send you to Dun Nithalem again. And inside Dun Nithalem, now the faction will be neutral to you and you'll be able to interact with them and do quests with them. And we're finally at the point where we can begin the rep grind, which is going to be collecting relics of Ulduar. So you can kill most of the mobs in the kind of iron dwarfs and stuff in um, Storm Peaks to get the relics of Ulduar. But what we're going to be doing is going to Halls of Lightning on normal difficulty and just farming the dungeon over and over again. And you'll get the relics of Ulduar from farming the dungeon. Collect as many as you need. Head back to the Dunniflum and speak to Lil Lilahof, the Quartermaster. You'll be able to hand in the relics of Ulduar there. And then you'll gain reputation and you'll eventually be exalted. Now, while you're doing the Halls of Lightning, though, you could be wearing like the Wormrest Accord tabard or something along those lines to be gaining reputation as well. So you can kind of double dip a little bit. Also, keep in mind, you could be doing this and collecting these while the time walking is active, too. So just keep collecting relics of Ulduar from either Storm Peaks, the Iron Dwarf type mobs, or you go inside Halls of Lightning and farm that up. Up to you. But collect your relics of Ulduar, hand them in, get the rep, finish that long question, and buy your mounts. So that brings us to the end of part one. Part two should be out in the next couple of days. And if you're watching this in the future, just click the card in the top right corner. That will take you to part two. Part two is going to cover the Cataclysm, Mr. Pandaria, and Warlords of Draenor reputation slash mounts. So if you're missing some of those, then definitely keep an eye out for that video. Outside of that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then please check out my live stream, twitch.tv forward slash silo. There'll be a link in the description down below. Uh, I do collection stuff, viewer based stuff like achievement runs and things like that. And very soon we are going to be doing a marathon run, leveling from one to max level as quickly as possible in one sitting. So if that sounds interesting, then give me a follow as well. But outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.